Okay, here we are again. It's been uh, 28 days, a whole month, since we last uh, checked on the compost pile. And a lot has happened. A lot has happened uh, on the farm, but a lot has happened within the compost pile. One of the most obvious things is that it, again, is smaller in volume. And this is one of the first things I want to talk about is starting a compost pile that would be three feet by three feet by three feet is the minimum size that you would start with. And you can see that this is pretty much what you'll end up with in the end. There's a shrinking and a concentrating of the materials. The matter gets more and more compact and concentrated. This is a good example of if you're happy with this volume, if this is the volume of compost that you need in the end, then by all means you can continue creating that dimension of compost pile. But if you can see behind me, the, the piles that are behind me are more finished compost. They um, obviously came from a larger mass. So let's talk about mass a little bit here. Mass is very interesting. This mass of uh, material that I'm standing in front of is just on the edge of being too small, too small to really hold its own. And that's why most composting experts talk about the compost pile being the minimum size three by three by three. And that is because what happens is it doesn't have enough of its own self to hold on to itself in a, in a sense, right? So we're gonna dig into this uh, pile and we're gonna see what's here. But I can tell by looking on the outside that the outside is dry, but it has already started to break down somewhat itself too. We're gonna move again the outside to the bottom of this pile and turn it. We probably won't need to adjust the moisture too much, maybe just on this outside portion, and the inside should look pretty good. Let's look at the temperature, uh, because that's a really interesting indicator too of as to what is happening in this compost pile. The, it registers um, at about 85 degrees. That's almost ambient temperatures. And what that's signifying to me is that we're deeply within the transformation process or the sort of um, condensing process that happens in the compost pile. We're no longer in that heating phase that we witnessed 28 days ago. This is now really this wonderful phase where you're starting to really make these wonderful, long, complex humic molecules. There's different microorganisms now that are called mesophilic organisms that are in here. And I wouldn't be surprised if we start to find higher order animals like worms and beetles and pill bugs or various other organisms that have now occupied this uh, ecosystem. So let's take a brief look inside and see what we find here. This is really wonderful. It has a nice earthy smell. And as you can see, it's starting to have the wonderful colors that finished compost has. What it doesn't have at this moment is the crumb, sort of the falling apart that you will have. <laughs> it still has a little bit of the identity of the starting ingredients. But as I'm moving it in my fingers, look how it's just coming apart. That is the beginning of these wonderful, uh, you know, fertility giving humus and organic matter that is in here, starting to lock itself up. What's so cool in a way is that you can s sort of metaphorically think of the, all the energy, the water, the energy that's in the plant material has now condensed down into this almost like it was a battery and it's storing all of that potential energy now into this gorgeous material. Okay, so here we're gonna remove just the out, outside layer that has been exposed to the uh, elements and we'll give it a little water. It has been breaking down a little bit on its own, but it needs water obviously for breaking down. So first you peel off the outer layer. Now, if you had straw on hand or some other material to put as like a skin over your compost pile, that 
can work as well. But sometimes it's just as easy to use the compost itself as the sort of protective skin of the real part that's decomposing. Underneath you can see that it is very moist and it's compacted over the month that we've turned it. So again, we're turning it to introduce oxygen. We're going to create a little more space between the materials so that, again, the decomposition process can happen. But the process of composting has really changed. It's no longer a heat generating process. It's what we would call a mesophilic process. It's more of ambient temperatures and it's being occupied by a whole other set of microorganisms. At this point, your compost pile shouldn't have any offensive smells. You may want to investigate it while you're turning it at this stage and see there could be pockets that are less decomposed than others. But mainly, it's a process of bringing more uniformity to your compost pile. It seems kind of like a mundane part of the process, but this is actually one of the more exciting parts of the composting process because it's the beginning of this concentration that happens. A concentration of sugars and minerals and nitrogen, carbon, all sorts of nutrients that where the original feedstocks of your compost pile are now in a very concentrated form. And hence, that's why you don't need to apply very much compost to your fields when you're um, wanting to amend the soil because it is so concentrated. Again, you can see we're applying like a nice sort of misting water stream on the drier parts of the outside of the compost pile. And just by giving it moisture like this, it has pretty much started to go through a decomposition. So those funguses and bacteria or whatever else is breaking it down, as soon as it gets water, it will start breaking it down. You might start to find worms and other things that are starting to occupy the cooler parts of this compost pile. That's wonderful too, because they will help transform this even further. If we were to compare it from last time that we turned the pile, you can see that there's way more of a uniformity of color and there's way more of a uniformity of the material. It's almost uniformly moist and uniformly decomposed. But again, this is nowhere near done. This is compost in process. At this point, I'd like to say something a little bit about the starting material. If you were to start with materials that were denser in matter, like let's say wood chips and um, cow manure, you wouldn't have the same so kind of pile reduction that we've had with the straw and cow manure. Mainly being that the straw, because of its hollowness inside, creates more air and movement of the air and other nutrients. When you use something like wood chips, it's solid in its nature. And so when it decomposes, it will either still be around or it will have not taken up so much space initially. Sometimes when you break open into the center, because it started to collapse on itself, you may smell some anaerobic sulfur-like smells. Again, this is why it's good to kind of open up the compost pile, investigate it, really see what's going on here. If at this point, when you are starting to turn your compost and you notice things like it smells uh, not quite right, then you would, of course, break it open and let more oxygen be there. Or if you come across an area where there's a lot of ants and roly polies, that means that the compost is too dry. At one point it was probably moist enough, but you need to add a little bit more water. I hope you can see this perspective that you don't need to add any more water at this point. In fact, if you were to add 
water, it would be counterproductive. You would drown out all the organisms that have worked hard to create this decomposition. And it would create an anaerobic, smelly condition. Here we are at the end. It's important to let it sit undisturbed because the water and the nutrients are balanced at this point. And so let the microorganisms do their work of gathering up all the materials and incorporating them into large chained humic molecules. Periodically, you can come by and check the temperature. It will be interesting to see that it will not get much higher than 85 degrees, maybe 90 because you've introduced a little more oxygen. But long gone are the days that it will be over 100 degrees.